This video provides examples to help you write your report. In addition to reviewing this video, refer to the assignment guidelines, the rubric, the citation guidelines, and the online lectures. Since we use this as an example, you cannot use Make-A-Wish for this assignment. Each assignment asks you to demonstrate your understanding of the core competencies of business writing. For this assignment, you are evaluated on five rubric categories. Most business writing has a persuasive goal. Using evidence to persuade your reader to take action is an important workplace skill. This video covers seven tips to help you write your report. Please pause on each slide to read the examples. Follow all format guidelines. This example shows how to write the title of your report. The introduction needs to convince the reader to read the entire report and preview your main points. Your introduction should include the following. Provide a one to two sentence introduction of each organization. Use evidence to demonstrate the effectiveness of each organization or the need for donations. Cite your evidence following the citation guidelines. Preview the key points. This preview should align with the organizational structure you select for the report. Include your recommendation for which organization to select. Use persuasive evidence in the introduction. The informative evidence here is not the best to use in the introduction. The persuasive evidence grabs the reader's attention by explaining the need for donations or a strength of the organization. It is your job as the writer to organize the evidence from your research summary to create a persuasive argument. There are two ways to organize your report. In option one, you will cover information about each organization separately. Your first heading is the name of a nonprofit. You will write three persuasive subheadings to show the strengths of this organization. Each subheading should highlight a reason that your reader should select this nonprofit for the CSR initiative. Your second heading is the name of a nonprofit with three subheadings to show the strengths of this organization. In option two, you will provide a direct comparison of the nonprofits throughout your report on three topics. Each heading will be a topic or criteria that you are using to compare the organizations. Under each topic, you will have a subheading to provide information about each organization. For example, here, the third topic addresses the focus on pediatric care. The best option for your report depends on the organizations you select and the evidence you find. In option one and two, the headings or subheadings that you write should be persuasive. Avoid using informative headings and subheadings. The informative examples here show headings that you should not use in your report. Recommendation and rationale should be your final heading in this report. In the report, capitalize your headings and subheadings following these examples from the CLEAR lecture. Explain the credibility of each source the first time you use it in the report. This way, the reader does not have to rely on your reference list to check the source credibility. You are required to have at least eight sources. You should have eight sentences similar to these examples where you introduce the source credibility. The second time you use a source in your report, just use the source number at the end of the sentence. Please refer to the additional examples in the Using Evidence Effectively lecture. You are welcome to use more than the required eight sources if this helps your persuasive argument. Please note, I've used highlighted text here to show the credibility statements. You should not use highlighted text in your report. A strong persuasive argument will use evidence from multiple sources to support each point. It should be clear where all the information is from. You should have at least two sources in each paragraph. 
you may find information about your nonprofit that does not portray the best image of the organization. Since your reader might be familiar with this negative information, you should mention this in the report. Explain why it is still a strong organization despite their weaknesses. Cite your sources at the start of the paragraph. As you introduce new sources in the paragraph, cite each source. This way it is clear where each piece of information is from. Limit your use of direct quotes. This example relies too much on the exact wording used on the website. Use direct quotes only when the exact wording is necessary. For example, if there's a quote from the CEO or an expert on a topic, using a direct quote can provide credibility to the information. For most other information, paraphrase in your own words instead of using a quote. When you do use a quote, make it clear in the text of the sentence where this information is from. See the citation guidelines and evidence lectures for examples of how to use quotes. You are required to use at least one visual element in your report. These are examples of visuals that you should not use in your report. These are visually appealing and could be a great addition to a website or marketing materials. However, in the context of this report, they don't fulfill the purpose of quickly conveying information to the reader that will help them make their decision. Select a visual that makes it easy for the reader to quickly process information. This example from the CLEAR lecture shows how using a table allows the reader to compare starting salaries for college majors. Using visual elements such as graphs, charts, and tables can be an effective way to communicate evidence. Refer to your visual in the text of the report. The visual should align with the information shared in the text. Cite the source of the visual. Your recommendation and rationale section is the conclusion for your report. State the organization your reader should select and use evidence to explain your recommendation. Cite sources in the conclusion following the citation guidelines. It is okay to use evidence here that you've already mentioned in the report. These examples show how evidence is used to directly compare the two organizations and support the writer's recommendation. If you use option one to organize, you will need at least two paragraphs of information to provide reasoning to support your choice. In option two, you've provided a direct comparison throughout the report, so this section can be one paragraph. In addition to following these examples, review the information from our lectures as you edit your report. Paragraphs should be four to seven sentences, avoid vague language, and edit to be concise. Please refer to these examples as you write and edit your report. Make sure you are not copying these examples exactly. Instead, use these to guide your writing.